In the spirit of Halloween, welcome to Silent Hill 2. It's Halloween time, and I thought it'd be cool to do a scary game. More importantly, a psychological horror that many say to be the most psychological. But don't take my word for it. Let's let the game speak for itself. <sighs> I'm James Sunderland, on a quest to find my wife Mary, who I could have sworn out of disease three years ago. But she sent me a letter saying, I'm waiting for you in our special place. Our special place could be anywhere in Silent Hill, although my first guess would be the park, on the water. But getting there won't be easy. You see, the main road's closed, so I have to make my way through the spooky, foggy forest. And I come across what looks to be... a well. It's just a well. But inside the graveyard here is a woman named Angela. She's out here looking for her mother. I say to her, I'm lost. How can I get to Silent Hill? Is this the right way? Yeah. Thanks. But be careful. There's bandits. Well, I don't really care. I gotta find my wife. So with that being said, I hit the foggy road. Now I hear many monstrous growls and footsteps around me, but like a vegetable tray at a kid's birthday party, we're probably not gonna get eaten. And I was right, because I safely made it to the streets of Silent Hill, where I spy a trail of blood. Maybe this guy can help me. So I follow the trail of blood all the way to a dead end tunnel, where something gross gets up to attack me. So like shopping at Home Depot, I grab a piece of wood. So what's next? I actually asked myself as I ran around aimlessly, and luckily without a hint from the map, I found the Woodside Apartment key next to this dead guy. Now by using my map, I make my way to the Woodside Apartments. Now this is quite scary. It's a building filled with darkness and desolation. Pure silence aside from my echoed footsteps upon the rotting carpet. But at least this apartment has one solution to the problem. A flashlight. <laughs> The mission continues into apartment 208, where we have a single man's living room, and most importantly a grandfather clock. And it won't budge. It appears a riddle is involved, but I'll need a special clock key if I want to attempt a solution. So I go up to the third floor and see a key, <laughs> but this bit <laughs> kicks it away. JK, it's a, it's a little girl. <laughs> hey, wait! So after getting a gun from apartment 301, I went back downstairs to have some fun, and I hear a baby crying from the room where the grandfather clock was. Let's investigate. And there he is, Pyramid Head. He's just standing there. Back into 208, and something's changed. The TV is on. JK, this guy's dead. Who could, have, who could have done this? I just saw three characters in the last minute. There's also a new key on the shelf to apartment 202, home to a butterfly crime scene. Now, I'm not usually one to go elbow deep into mysterious holes, but this is an exception. Clock key. I hardly know her. I use that clock key to manually change the time inside the grandfather clock. To match the riddle, of course. And what do you know, it was covering a passageway to more apartments. Most importantly, this one, where Pyramid Head's doing something with the mannequins. He then starts coming for me, but he stepped into a spider web so it threw him off kilter. So I took that opportunity to shoot him down. <laughs> And skipping over some lesser important puzzle details, I go downstairs to apartment 101, where this fella Eddie is vomiting into a toilet. <laughs> There's also a dead guy in the fridge, but he didn't do that. It wasn't me! We just talk about how wild this place is. I'm like, have you seen these monsters? And he's like, I've never seen the ones you saw. I believe each character manifests their own creatures. We tell each other, good luck out there, and head on forward. Where I find the fire escape key. Remember the f kicked it? Then we head to the fire escape, which isn't a fire escape, but a door that leads to the Blue Creek Apartments. <laughs> Where in one of the rooms, I find Angela from the cemetery lying on the ground with a knife. Did you find your mother? She's not anywhere. She still can't find her mom. She's also very tired and confused. I'm so tired. She almost attacks me, but just gives me her knife and heads out alone. This is all so confusing. Why are Eddie and Angela so suspicious? I don't know. But let's get out of here. And to make a long puzzle short, I found the apartment stairway key that led me to the apartment stairway where Pyramid Head's getting wild again. This isn't what you think it is. He's still wearing his apron. He's got a mighty knife swing, but I shoot him for like a minute. And he retreats downstairs, draining the flooded stairway, allowing me to finally leave the apartments and back to the foggy streets. Next stop, my wife and I's special place, Rosewater Park. And on the way there, I run into that little girl from the apartment. You! And she says, You didn't love Mary anyway. Wait! How do you know Mary's name? And she runs off. How does she know Mary's name? We're just gonna have to find out. Right after that, we arrive at Rosewater Park. And oh my goodness, is that my wife? Mary? Do I look? No, it's Maria, an identical woman with different hair. My name is Maria. 
She says, are you sure this is your special place? I'm like, now that you mention it, the hotel was also our special place. I must go there. And even though Maria's coming off rather ghostly, I let her tag along. Now things only get freakier as we hear a commotion from Pete's Bullarama. Let's go bowling. I hate bowling. Inside, Eddie's eating a medium three-topping pizza and chatting with a little girl who we now know as Laura. Apparently he's been running from the cops and nobody will forgive him. What did he do? Then I roll in and Laura runs away. Bye-bye. Wait. It's not safe out there. We have to save her. Eddie kept eating, so Maria and I follow Laura all the way to the Brookhaven Hospital. Over there! Now we're in familiar territory. Although it's not the same hospital from Silent Hill 1, it's still a hospital in Silent Hill. So the nurses in the hallways aren't really looking to administer any treatments. But that doesn't mean I'm not. Now back to finding Laura. So after dropping off Maria in this room to sleep, because this place is comfortable, I take myself on up to the roof, where I find nothing of importance, until Pyramid Head pops in and knocks me off. Awaking in the padded cell sector, we find a code written in blood. A code that was crucial to unlocking this four-lock box that contained a piece of hair. I use that piece of hair as fishing line to help me get the elevator key out of the shower drain. Now I can take the elevator down to the first floor patient wing, where I find that pesky Laura playing in one of the rooms. I ask her, hey. How do you know about Mary? She said her and Mary met at the hospital last year, which doesn't add up, because that old bag of bones died years ago. Anyways, come with me. It's not safe here. On our way out, she says, wait, I forgot my letter from Mary, so she leads me to a nasty room to retrieve it. Further back, in the desk. We don't know. It's a trap. The flesh lips are here. What even is that? They're choking me out with their feet. Now some men would pay for this, but I'm all out of cash. And after killing them, the world starts changing. And by the looks of this rusty mesh architecture, we're going into the other world. Waking up in a grassy room, I think to myself, holy cannoli, I gotta escape this hospital. So I go upstairs to wake up Maria, and she's gone. But luckily for me, she was just hanging out in the basement. Kind of like those missing families I have in mind. I was almost killed back there. All you care about is that dead wife of yours. Now reunited, we head down a very long staircase, taking us even deeper into the depths of Brookhaven. Only to be chased down by Pyramid Head. I get out just in time, but sadly Maria doesn't make it. No! By golly, he sliced her up like oranges in a blue moon. Now engulfed in sadness and guilt, I ride the elevator back up to the first floor. And before leaving the hospital, I head into the office where I see Laura running down the street. I don't know where she's going, but thanks to this new map I got, I know where I'm going. The Historical Society. Let's go on a journey. Hey. Hey. We arrive at the Historical Society, or museum rather, and check out various pieces of art. Take a look at this one. That's Pyramid Head. And in the next room, I find a mysterious hole in the wall that leads me down the longest path ever. It was like two minutes. <laughs> and into a room with a big hole in the ground that I obviously have to jump into. Leading to what looks to be a prison cafeteria. Eddie's down here. Killing a person ain't no big deal. He says this guy was making fun of me, so I killed him. You can't just kill someone. Why not? Yeah, I was just kidding, he says, and he leaves. Into the Toluca prison we go. And it's basically three long hallways, four rows of cell blocks, and then a big courtyard on the east side, in which we spend most of our time searching the entire prison for three specific tablets we'll need to get out of here. This part also scared me, because in one of the cell blocks, there's just this sound. <laughs> I didn't like that. So once the three tablets are secured, we head out to the courtyard gallows to activate whatever this is. <laughs> Doing this rewarded us with a horseshoe that can be fastened into a makeshift handle for the trap door out of here. Now jumping in that hole led to jumping in this hole, which ultimately led to jumping in this hole. Who am I, Stanley Yelnats? Okay, now I'm in a mysterious elevator, and it goes down even further. What are these coordinates? And how was I avoiding all that fall damage? Anyways, what's this door lead to? The Labyrinth. On God, we're in the back rooms right now. It's an uncharted maze that is actually the tamest area by design, but the fact that we're this far underground makes it feel completely out of place, demonic, and unsettling. <laughs> Which is contrasted by the water tunnel portions that actually fit the setting, making it less unsettling. That's a rare analysis from me. Anyways, exploring a bit and solving a Mayan-style head puzzle, we find Maria, who's locked in a cell down here. I say, hey, I thought you died. I thought that thing killed you. And she creepily responds, James, honey. Did something happen to you? You sound a lot like my wife right now. And she also mentions a videotape that we made at the hotel. Maybe that has the answers. Anyways, stay put. I'm coming for you. I'll be there soon. So as I make my way to her rescue, I hear a commotion from this room here. 
Let's head inside. It's Angela in the abstract daddy. Angela's abusive alcoholic father reincarnated as a table. Get your feet off the table, he says before sucking on my head. I was scared, but they don't call me the bus boy for nothing. <laughs> Then Angela comes at me like I did something wrong. You made me sick. You said Mary was dead, you liar. You probably didn't want her around anymore, you fuck. That's ridiculous. That aside, I keep pushing through the water tunnels and find the door leading to Maria's cell. Maria? But I'm too late. She's dead in bed. Reminds me of my favorite Dr. Seuss book, Dead in my bed. How could this have happened? What is going on here? Mystery is rising as I exit the labyrinth into the catacombs, containing the grave sites of Angela, Eddie, and me. My grave is also bottomless, so might as well jump in. Eddie, what are you doing? What does it look like? Where Eddie gives a schizophrenic monologue. From now on, if anyone makes fun of me, I'll kill him! And I respond to the crazy guy holding a gun by saying, Have you gone nuts? What did you say? <laughs> and after shooting him into the next room, Eddie says, I killed a dog, it was fun. But you're no different from me, James. That's not true. So I had to snipe him. Let's party! He's very fast, so I gotta be quick. Ah! Eddie? But killing him makes me sad because I'm not a killer. I'm James. Mary, did you really die? I ask myself as I exit out to the docks. Or I find a rowboat. Let's take it across the lake. All the way to the Lakeview Hotel. And like the movie Final Destination, this is our final destination. Inside I grab a map. We're on room 312 it says, waiting for you. I can't wait to finally find my wife. But I'm a little hungry, so I check out the restaurant first and I find Laura playing the piano. Did I scare you? Yeah. She's here looking for Mary's letter. A letter that will reveal the truth to me, whatever that means. Maybe you'll get it if you see the other letter. I gotta find it! I then head to the office, where I see a note about the whereabouts of my videotape, and also a key to room 312. The tape was in the employee's safe, now I just need to find my way to 312. And it definitely has something to do with this big music box in the lobby. It's a good thing I collected all three missing music boxes from around the hotel before I came here. I put them down and a fine tune starts playing, and I'm given a stairway key, a staircase that leads to the third floor, and ultimately room 312. It's time to learn the truth. Let's watch the tape. Are you taping again? It's my wife, Mary. But I just love it here. Please promise you'll take me again, James. It's a heartwarming scene, until it turns into a snuff film of me smothering her in bed. It was me all along. Then Laura enters the room. Did you find Mary? Nope, she's dead. I killed her. Why'd you do it? I hate you! Then Mary's voice rings from the radio. James, please hurry to me. Oh my goodness, let's go. So I step out the room and things look a lot different. It's very moist in here. It's the other world. So I take the elevator down to the basement, because I was told to do that, where things are a lot different. It's flooded. I then head to the staircase, where Angela's standing on burning stairs. Thinks I'm her mama. Mama! I was looking for you. You're not mama. It's you again. I try to help her out, but she's like, I deserved what happened. No, Angela. That's wrong. Don't pity me. And she walks away into the flames. It's hot as hell in here. For me, it's always like this. So it seems Angela is in a perpetual hell. That's sad. The fire then goes away, and we take the stairs up to what looks to be a pre-boss room. I can tell because of all the save points on the wall. We walk into a big room, and it's Maria. Trapped by the pyramid heads. You better let her down, I say. And she's executed right in front of me. No! I must avenge her. Now it's time to end this. And these guys are quick. So I run across the room into the corner and shoot them until they turn around and kill themselves. And I leave into a long hallway containing a conversation with my wife. She's sick. She's scared. She's lost all hope. No use to anyone. I'll be dead soon anyway. I killed her ass, it don't matter. Wait! Now up a very long metal staircase to the roof, where I finally find my wife Mary. She's fine. She's safe. James, I've been waiting. She apologizes for being a burden, and forgives me for what I've done. You really think I could ever forgive you for what you did? Wait, no she doesn't. And she transforms into a caged nun, with bat minions and a tentacle to gag me. So I take aim and shoot her down like an enemy spy plane. Enemy spy plane incoming. <laughs> Goodbye, Mary. 
And my ending is that I link up with Maria back at Rosewater Park. And even though she died three times, I love her. I want you with me. And we live happily ever after. Heartwarming and beautiful. And that's the video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, why don't you drop a like down below? Maybe even a comment. And better yet, check out one of these videos I have right here. Here's Silent Hill 1, and here's something else. And very importantly, I want to give a shout out to my handsome and beautiful patrons that are directly behind me. They are there. The support means so much to me. I couldn't ask for more. And this has been Silent Hill 2 on PS2 at night. And that's about it for me. I'll see you in the next one.